This is Corinna Smith. And when she found out that her husband of 38 years sexually assaulted her children when they were children, she took his life in one of the worst ways. Corinna lived a pretty happy, unassuming, normal life in the town of Neston near Liverpool. And then in July of 2020, her daughter confided in her that their father, Michael Baines, had sexually assaulted both of them for many years when they were children. Worse than finding out that your kids had been assaulted by your husband, Corinna also realized that the reason why her son had been so troubled his entire life was because of this abuse and the same reason why he had taken his own life in 2007 when he was only 25 years old. Just before her son Craig died, he had told her that there was a man who had harmed him when he was a child, but he never told her who. Corinna left her daughter and went home and took matters into her own hands. She went home, picked up a bucket from her garden and filled it with water and then took it into the kitchen. She put the water on to boil and there she added three kilograms of sugar and waited for it. It took 13 minutes. Then she went into their downstairs bedroom, stood over the bed and poured the liquid all over his body, trying to get as much as she could. As opposed to add insult to injury, she didn't even call the police. She actually walked down the street to a neighbor who lived nine doors away and told that person, I hurt him really bad. I think I killed him. That neighbor went back to her house to see what in the world she was even talking about and found Michael just writhing in pain and called the police. The neighbor said that the skin on his right arm and hand was already starting to peel off. They took him to a local hospital's burn unit and discovered that there were severe burns on 36% of his body. There he lived for an additional five more weeks, enduring excruciating surgeries and skin grafts. Unfortunately for Corinna, British police did not agree with her version of justice. In June of 2021, she was found guilty of murder. In one of her police interviews, she admitted that she poured boiling water over Michael with sugar in it, but she said that the whole thing was a blur and minutes became seconds. I just lost it and I was so emotional. I was not acting out of revenge. The prosecution said that she had time to think about things and calm down the 13 minutes that the water was boiling. Because she added sugar to the boiling water, it created a very viscous, sticky liquid that was exceptionally hard to remove from his skin, causing more damage and proving that Corinna wanted to hurt him. Then they said she wasted time and didn't call emergency services, which is ultimately why he might have died. Her sentencing was July 12th, 2021, and she was given life in prison for the exceptionally cruel way that she murdered her husband. I guess the only silver lining is that they did take pity on her and she will be eligible for parole in 12 years instead of 40. I think outside of the comment of free Corinna, this might be the most common comment on that video. It looks like we might be able to actually do what a lot of you want to do here. So uh, yesterday at about 4 a.m. I got an email from someone in England saying that they saw my video and they were overwhelmed with the fact that so many people in America want to help Corinna. The information that I have right now from this person who says they are a friend of the family is that I got the name of the prison and her prisoner ID number. The prison is HMP style and I'm not releasing the prison number just yet. Instead, what I decided to do was send a email directly to Corinna asking her permission to put that out there because this is 8 million people and that's got to be overwhelming. In my email, I told her that people wanted to just send her an email or send her something to make sure she's comfortable. Uh, the email a prisoner dot com website does cost about 0.65 pounds to send an email message. Uh, and in order for you to even use it, you have to add credit to their system. So just giving you a heads up, there are going to be fees. It's the same way it works in the States. The website says that uh, they print out all of the emails that they get and they give them out during morning mail time to their prisoners. So probably sometime tomorrow, she would get my email in the first place. Then she'd be able to respond to me when she wanted. When I get her response as to whether she wants you all to know her date of birth and her ID number and everything else, I will post it here. I just want to be respectful. It can't be that great to know that the entire world knows that you just got life in prison. Finally, the update we've kind of all been waiting for. A lot's happened in the last week, so let me bring you through it. I sent an email to Corinna and her one of her daughters, not a part of the original trial, reached out to me. And we've been speaking pretty much every day for like the last week. 
they tried to make a GoFundMe. It was taken down. We contacted other sort of crowdfunding websites. Those people all agreed to not cover this case or take on Corinna's case. It appears now that we can say that we would like to, as a community, support Corinna Smith's family, and that is perfectly okay for us to crowdfund. So here's the link to that. What else has happened? Well, Corinna was not at all prepared for the response from any of you. And in fact, apparently she didn't believe me when I sent the first message saying that 8 million people had watched the video. So I said I was gonna email her tonight and I was going to put a screenshot showing the clip that there have been 15 million views on the first one. As far as some of you who want to put money on her books, there is a cap. She cannot have more than 900 pounds and her family and friends have already filled that. So there's really no need for you all to do that. They would love for you to support their GoFundMe because this would go to the family and helping to deal with the fact that at this point, Corinna will not be getting out of prison until she's 71 years old. As for the rumors that she's not going to appeal, she's going to appeal, she hasn't decided yet. It's super overwhelming. For everyone involved, including her family, her children who were mentioned in some of the articles are being harassed by the media and paparazzi. That's really all for the update. Uh, her daughter, who I've been speaking with, said that she did send me like a much longer email, but because the prison is backed up with all of the messages that everyone has been sending, that she hasn't had, like they haven't had a chance to get them all out. That's fine, I'm cool with that. I'm just happy that she's okay. Uh, her daughter tells me that they call her every day. Uh, she told me that she got to see her mom today. That's awesome. From the two different family members that I spoke to, everyone is very overwhelmed. This has been a really big, like a huge situation. No one was prepared for the global response. Uh, and they're just trying to find the way to best support the family members. Uh, and what they want is if you can support them in any way so that they can look out for her grandchildren and other people in the family right now. So again, this is the GoFundMe and screw it, I'm just gonna post the link in the comments to this video because why not? I understand people being doubtful of a GoFundMe. So this is why I posted the actual email that I received from Corinna. As I said to you before, she's totally open to receiving letters of support from people. She did give the date of birth at the bottom if you wanna try and put money on her books. But as I said in the last video, she is capped out at 900 pounds which is about 1200 us dollars and every time i've tried to add money to her books it says that her account can't take anymore if you notice here the only thing that corinna appears to be bothered by is the fact that she can't be there for her grandchildren and her daughter while the husband is going through chemotherapy and can't work she's specifically worried about how her daughter and grandchildren are going to survive while she is in prison because she was supposed to be the person who was going to help them. She doesn't even seem particularly bothered by the fact that she's in prison. She's more like, damn, now I can't be there for my family. So any money that you are giving to the GoFundMe is going to these people, the people who Corinna wanted to be there for, but she can't because she's living with the consequences of what she did. And furthermore, I actually don't want any more comments doubting the validity of this. I have done my research as I do for all of my videos. I didn't just post it based on the first person who sent me a message saying, I'm Corinna Smith's daughter. I spoke to multiple family members and I confirmed her identity with multiple different people. So unless there's this elaborate large network of people trying to make money off of this tragedy, which is odd considering most people in the UK don't even know about this case, it's highly unlikely. And even when things end up being fake on GoFundMe or things of that nature, people get their money back. So what are we afraid of here? Everyone was so ready to send her thousands upon thousands of dollars to put on her books for snacks, but not money to help her children and her grandchildren. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't understand. But if you do want to help her, I'm going to put the GoFundMe in the comments like I said I was. And uh, hopefully people who do care will support her.